Good day, everyone. We are students from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Our group, the Rubber Band, will be discussing the commodity system analysis of rubber in the Philippines in partial fulfillment of the requirements in the subject ABME 103 entitled Agribusiness System and Modalities. The rubber tree, or the Hevea brasiliensis, originated from the rainforest of Amazon region in South America, as these trees thrive in areas with low altitude wet environment. It is generally high in productivity among tropical regions of Asia and Western Africa with constant high temperatures of 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. Rubber tree is under the rubber wood species that could grow from medium to tall heights of 100 to 130 feet with deep tap roots and having a lifespan of 100 years long. There are two main types of rubber used in the industry, the natural rubber from latex and the synthetic rubber from petroleum. The natural rubber is widely used for production of various rubber products such as boots, shoe soles, vehicle tires, mattresses, and a lot more. Majority of its manufactured goods can be traced to Southeast Asian countries of Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Indonesia, whereas synthetic rubber is mostly produced in the industrialized countries of United States, Japan, Western Europe, and Eastern Europe. In 1906, neighboring Asian countries such as Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand has introduced rubber to the Philippines. In 1920, rubber mills were established in Basilan, Mindanao. In the 1950s, rubber processing plants were constructed in Mindanao by private corporations. In 1991 to 1995, rubber became the top dollar earned in the Philippines. It took up 70% of the annual agricultural sales, amounting up to $9 billion. In 2010 to 2011, the Zamboanga Peninsula has earned the title the highest rubber producing region. In the year 2020, the Department of Agriculture has started planning for the implementation of trained to mechanize Philippine agriculture and fisheries. The six leading countries in rubber production are Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, China, India, and Malaysia. The Philippines, on the other hand, ranks seventh in rubber production worldwide. In terms of area of production, 223,283.17 hectares were designated for rubber production in the country as of the year 2016. Zamboanga Peninsula recorded the largest area planted to rubber in the country, with 90,297 hectares or 40% of the total area. In terms of social economic importance, the rubber industry provides employment to thousands of Filipinos, which helps alleviate the unemployment rate of the country. In the year 2018, more than 40,000 Filipinos were employed in the Philippine Rubber Industries Association. In analyzing the status of natural rubber in the country, the group utilized the Commodity System Analysis Framework, which is consists of input, production, processing, marketing, and support subsystems. Let us now proceed to the input sector. Major input used. These are seeds of Hevea brasiliensis or rubber and fertilizers. Next, we have plant protection. Early development of plant protection against pests and pathogens was spraying. Institutional growers would equip helicopters with sprayers. Small holders climbed and sprayed each tree manually. For the tapping system, the practice must be precise. Proper techniques will lead to better maximize yield from the tree. Tapping is sourced from third-party laborers and is currently high in demand. The mechanization of tapping is not advisable since the skill is specialized and polished through years of experience. A quality a machine cannot replicate. Daily tapping is not recommended. Repeated incisions affect the tree's growth and induces inner bark discoloration. Researchers have developed a tapping system in which they practice tapping once in every two days. And the indicator of the tree's readiness has shifted from its age to its size. Rubber is known to be a versatile and abundant resource on our planet. With that, Rubber serves a plethora of uses that are helpful to people. Process products derived from rubber are mainly for industrial use, medical use, and others. For industrial use, the products are molded and unmolded rubber products, conveyor belts, hose, and belts. For medical use, the products are liquid silicon rubber, surgical operation equipment, and drug eluting devices. Other than that, it is also widely used in producing footwear, household items, and school and office supplies. The major regions that process rubber in the country include the National Capital Region, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, and Central Visayas. On the other hand, the members of the rubber industry can be classified into two, the members of the Philippine Rubber Industry Association and the non-members of the said association such as the Yokohama Tire Philippines Inc. 
The rubber industry also has its sub-industries, and those include tires, automotive or industrial, footwear, and latex. This figure about the Philippine Natural Rubber Global Link wants to show that the natural rubber in the Philippines either goes to the local market, which includes Philippine rubber manufacturers, and or Yokohama Tire Philippines Inc. or to other countries. In addition, rubber manufacturers in the Philippines produce both tire and non-tire products, which are sold in domestic and international market. Volume and value of products. Export performance of Philippines in terms of natural rubber and rubber-based products declined from the year 2012 to 2016 from 405.99 million US dollars to 135.08 million US dollars. Decreasing value of rubber-based products like tires caused the decline in export performance of rubber. Most of the Philippines' natural rubber were exported to Malaysia, amounting to 82.11% of the total natural rubber produced in the Philippines. On the other hand, Japan led the acquisition of rubber-based products with 43%. The marketing sector. The global value chain of natural rubber encompasses a short chain that comprises major processing activities, adding value in the post-production phase prior to the delivery of natural rubber to the final market. It could be divided into five value-adding stages, the cultivation, tapping, processing, trading, marketing, and distribution. The figure illustrates the fifth stage of the chain, which is the marketing and distribution of natural rubber in the Philippines. Based on the diagram, there are four existing primary end markets for natural rubber, namely the transportation, healthcare, industrial or construction, and the apparel and footwear products. The transportation segment serves as the most significant among the four markets, with an estimated market demand of 70%. On the other hand, the healthcare, healthcare market for natural rubber has an estimated of 13% of the market share. The other major end markets are the industrial or construction that accounts to the 9% of the rubber market demand and the remaining 8% is obtained from the apparel products. Apparel products. All of these end markets for natural rubber and the marketing sector of rubber industry in the Philippines as a whole could be influenced by four elements. The price of the commodity, the quality of the products, the marketing channels, and the industry standards. For the marketing channels, the Philippine rubber industry follows a simple marketing channel framework which is illustrated in the figure. Rubber tree plants are primarily cultivated and produced by farmers, specifically the smallholders, and others can be rooted from company-owned farms and production areas. This is followed by the rubber processing and manufacturing plants, where the harvested rubber serves as the main raw material subjected to further processing actions and activities until the finished output of high-quality rubber commodities are achieved. The final products go directly either to the domestic market and the export market. It could be seen in the diagram that there is an intermediary point present in the marketing channel between the small landholders and processing companies. And these are the middlemen or dealers. With their networks within and beyond the rubber industry, middlemen facilitates necessary transactions and negotiations to connect linkages from the production sector, from the production sector to the processing sector. Meanwhile, this figure shows the rubber marketing channel for smallholders that is being followed in India. It is more complex as compared to the flow of marketing channels in the Philippines, which is relatively simple. If there is marketing channels designed for smallholders in India, there is a separate marketing channel for the estates which is shown in the figure. Marketing by estates produce more efficiently because they have an improved marketing system towards a better price realization. For the volume absorbed by each channel, Majority of rubber produced in the Philippines are in the form of cup lumps. 70% of the cup lumps produced are exported while the remaining 30% is processed into items such as shoes. For the price of rubber in the Philippines, the highest price set per kilogram of rubber amounted to 132.35 pesos in 2017. However, in the succeeding years up until August 2020, the price of rubber per kilogram has been inconsistent. The graph shows the world's projected natural rubber supply in the year 2021 to 2022. From the graph, the projected production in 2021 and 2022 amounts to 15,174,000 and 15,352,000 tons respectively. On the other hand, this graph shows the world's projected demand for natural rubber in the year 2021 to 2022. The graph illustrates that the consumption of rubber in 2021 and 2022 amounts to 14,723,000 and 15,238,000 tons, respectively. 
For the projected demand and gap, it can be seen on the graph that in the next 10 years, the demand will outweigh the supply. And in 2030, there will be a gap of 1,067.31 metric tons. The following table presents the top 10 exporters of semi-processed rubber in the years 2005 to 2015. As seen in the table below, the top three exporters are Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Well, the following table shows us the top 10 importers of semi-processed rubber for the years 2005 to 2015. As we can see in the table below, the top three importers are China, Malaysia, and the United States. Now, let us proceed to the support subsystem. The government agencies supporting the rubber industry through projects and programs are, but not limited to, the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Trade and Industry, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the Department of Agrarian Reform, Phil Rubber Technical Working Group, and the Philippine Rubber Industry Association. Investment Priorities There are three areas of concerns with its corresponding strategies. First is the loans assistance with the provision of loans to rubber processors, growers, and traders. Next is the investment opportunity seminar with the conduct of continuous promotion for MSMEs providing investment opportunities towards additional investment, networking, establishment of business contact, and generate additional employment. Last is the investment promotion campaign with the establishment of new and modernization of processing and manufacturing plants, machinery upgrading, and promotion of rubber and rubber products. Other agro-services. Agro-services includes the productivity of rubber plantation, specifically for smallholders, compliance with the ISO certification, market structure of rubber in the Philippines, both for the domestic and export marketing, initiatives for research, development, and extension, and last is the information, policy, formulation, and advocacy. Now for the SWOT analysis of the input sector. The input sector strength is the availability of rubber facilities, equipment, and supplies. One factor that made this possible is through the different initiatives spearheaded by the government, such as the Department of Agriculture's distribution of rubber nurseries that produce high-quality seedlings. On the other hand, there are also weaknesses that besets the input sector. Generally, inputs such as seed, fertilizer, labor, and technology are inaccessible for smallhold farmers which is primarily because farmers don't have the financial capacity to acquire the necessary inputs. Other than the intrinsic strengths and weaknesses of the farm sector, there are also opportunities that the said sector can take advantage of. One greatest opportunity is the different agencies' plans and programs that aims to increase the productivity of the sector by providing inputs such as quality seedlings, high-performing laborers, and advanced technology. The threat, nonetheless, is the continuous increase of price of inputs, which will directly impact the smallhold farmers, considering that they are the ones who are price sensitive given their limited financial capacity. In the production sector, for the strengths we have availability of land areas for production, favorable agroclimatic conditions for rubber cultivation, the availability of labor and the availability of technical information and education. The weaknesses would be the inadequacy of supplying quality planting materials. There are only few accredited nurseries, high cost of inputs and utilities, and insufficiently trained tappers. An opportunity would be demand is forecasted to increase beyond the year 2020. Threats are the presence of pests and diseases, cop lumps theft cases, and political and security instability. For the processing sector, the strengths include the presence of the non-stock corporation of Philippine Rubber Industry Association. Another significant aspect is the rubber itself that is widely ubiquitous, hence serving various utilization that is helpful to people. Through time, the cultivation and tapping techniques for rubber commodity underwent modifications, leading to an improved quality of rubber for processing. However, the sector is beset with low levels of ISO certification. Some identified opportunities is the introduction of more advanced technologies for rubber processing as well as the close proximity of the Philippines to other major processors and consumers of rubber. Threat, however, includes the cost-prohibitive processing environment in the country and the high level of competitive environment among rubber processors. 
For the marketing sector, the strengths include following a simple marketing channel framework, their middlemen facilitating the transactions between farmers and processors, and with the Philippines having close proximity to importers of rubber, exports outweigh imports. For the weaknesses, natural rubber is barely promoted in the Philippines. The smallness of operations of farmers hinders product differentiation and higher value of rubber products. The lack of ISO certification also resulted in low acceptability and recognition of rubber products as compared to other countries. Lastly, with the presence of political and security issues, opportunities for market expansion are being hindered. For the opportunities, the marketing sector can take advantage of increasing promotion of natural rubber, provide financial assistance to farmers and allow them to access facilities and laboratories, and conform to quality standards to increase the competitiveness of rubber products made in the country. On the other hand, the threats include high cost of production and absence of standards hindering the expansion and penetration of international standards. Support Services, Strengths, Presence of governing bodies like Philippine Rubber Research Institute and Philippine Rubber Industry Association, which focus on upstream processing, manufacturing, trading, and propagation in the rubber industry. In terms of the weaknesses, lack of regulatory body established that will impose policies and measures that would require testing services in order to make sure that the quality of rubber satisfies the accepted international standards in the industry. Opportunities includes existence of research departments like DOST that can formulate technologies to support the industry. And threats includes volatile prices of rubber and distant testing laboratory to rubber processors. The recommendations for the first conclusion are the following. Geographical expansion of operations up north in Luzon and Visayas. Providing incentives for the reforestation of balding mountains and forests with rubber trees. In order to solve the low level of productivity, there should be assistance of government and cohesive relationship of farmers and different organizations, farm integration, and the immersion of young and brilliant minds in the sector. The following are the recommendations for the third conclusion. Collective production of farmers and standardization of rubber collected. The establishment of new marketing channels such as the auction and the partnership system. In response to low levels of ISO certification, different government bodies like DOST, DANR, DAR, and other private institutions should take a huge part in establishing a regulatory body. This will give way to a higher exporting value of rubber from the Philippines to its export destination. The natural rubber supply chain shown in the figures were developed and practiced by Halcyon Agricultural Corporation the world's leading rubber franchise with an integrated global network spanning plantations, processing, and distribution of quality rubber. Implementing the steps exhibit on the supply chain from plantations to processing and then distribution, in addition to the recommended answers to the concluded problems of the Philippine rubber industry, the country will spearhead and will be able to compete with neighboring Asian countries in producing and exporting the commodity. That marks the end of our Rubber's Commodity System Analysis. Thank you all for listening. If you have inquiries, send us an email at eumindanao at up.edu.ph. Thank you.